What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how you can set up a page control, which is these dots down here that indicate what page a user is on in your app. So this has been requested in the comments a few times from some of you guys that are coming from Android. Uh, on Android, I believe it's called a uh, page review. But basically, we can swipe between these pages and you can see that the indicator down here changes uh, as we swipe through. Uh, of course, you can also tap on this in the left or right direction. And as the indicator of the current page uh, moves, the respective content also moves. It's a pretty common control. You can see it at the bottom of your home screen on your uh, device. Uh, you can see it in apps like Facebook, Instagram. It's pretty much all over the place and it's pretty easy to set up as well. So that said, make sure you destroy the like button as always. Hit subscribe while you're at it. Get Xcode ready. Let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, let's begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with a single view application and I'm gonna go ahead and call this project my page control. Go ahead and save it wherever you'd like. I'll throw it in this folder and let's get into it. So first things first, let me expand my Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work. And let me also select a simulator up here. Let's go with this one. Hit that run button so it boots up and it's ready to go for us. And let's start talking about page controls. So first things first, you can add a page control either programmatically or via the storyboard. And I'm gonna briefly go over both approaches. So we're gonna do it via code first, since it's a little more involved, and then we'll also hook it up with a uh, storyboard uh, IV outlet, and we'll show that approach as well. So a page control, if you're not familiar, is basically uh, what I went over at the beginning of the video, the dots that kind of show the user which page of a scrollable content the user is viewing. It's oftentimes used for horizontally scrolling content. And to create it, it's pretty simple. We're gonna create it here with a private constant and we'll call it a page control. And it is a UI page control. And I'm gonna create it in this way, which is a anonymous closure. This is how I generally like to create my uh, properties. So we're gonna say page control is a UI page control. We can go ahead and return this guy. And uh, basically you can assign a few properties on here. So there's current page indicator, uh, there's uh, the tint colors, uh, number of pages is the one we wanna care about in the beginning. And this, this of course specifies the number of dots to be shown. So we're gonna stick with five. And let's go ahead and uh, now that we have this basic setup, let's add it as a sub view in view did load. And then we're also going to override view did layout sub views. Make sure we call super in here. And let's give this guy a frame. We're gonna say it's a CG rect, X is 10. Uh, what I will say is view.frame.size.height minus 100. Uh, width will say is view.frame.sizeWidth minus 20, 10 point buffer each side. And we'll say the height is, I don't know, let's do 70. And let me also give this a background color since sometimes it's a little difficult to see. So I'm also gonna give this a background color of, uh, let's do system blue. So go ahead and hit command R and let's see what that looks like. So we should see it down here. So there it is. You can see that the selected color is white and the other dots are this very, very subtle gray. So we actually can select either the right or the left and the dot moves. Now, the thing we actually wanna do and what we care about is how do we hook up a scroll view or some content? And when we tap on the page control, 
we want to uh, have that content move. And uh, conversely, when we swipe the content, we want the page control to also uh, change uh, the selected indicator. So that's also pretty easy to do. We basically are going to first create a scroll view and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it like this and be a little lazy about it. So we can simply create a scroll view here and let's go ahead and say add sub view scroll view. We're gonna to wanna to set a frame to it uh, in a second. Actually, let's just do it right now really fast. So we'll say the scroll view's frame is a CG rect zero zero uh, view dot frame dot size dot width. And this is going to be view dot frame size height. And then we're gonna subtract uh, 100, I believe, since this is 100 up. So that looks good. So that will give us a frame for our scroll view. And then we're also gonna create a function uh, to configure the scroll view's contents. So we're gonna call this configure scroll view. And in here, we're gonna say if scroll view dot sub views, whoops, sub views dot count is two, then we can call configure. So you guys might be wondering why I use two here because a view by default does not have any sub views. Uh, the reasoning is a scroll view actually does have sub views by default. Uh, if you are familiar with scroll indicators, which is the little bar on the right, uh, which scrolls as you scroll vertically and a bar on the bottom which scrolls horizontally as you scroll, those are actually sub views. And if you actually say if this equals zero, this never gets called because a, a scroll view inherently starts off with two sub views. So uh, in here, we're gonna create content for the scroll view, but let's go ahead and set a background color to this so we can make sure it's showing up. Command R, you should see it right here. All right, looking good. Now we wanna add pages to it and I'm gonna use different colors for those pages so we can actually see them as we scroll. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna say for X in zero, and I think we use five. Whoops, not R, we want five. We're gonna create pages in here. And even before then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, scroll view set content size, or we can just assign it directly if I'm not mistaken. Yep, we can say CZ size. And we want a width and a height. So this is gonna be the view.frame.size.width multiplied by five. You can leave this zero. What you probably should do, which is more appropriate, is use the height of the scroll view. And let's create those pages in here. We're also going to set paging enabled, which basically snaps each page to uh, the entirety of the screen rather than allowing the user to scroll halfway in between. And in here, each page is going to be a UI view with a frame. The Y is not going to change. The view is not going to change between each, um, each page. And the height is not gonna change either. What is going to change is the X offset. So the X offset is going to be uh, the X converted to a CG float because it's an integer to begin with, multiplied by view.frame.size.width. And then next, we're simply going to add it as a sub view of our scroll view. And let me create a array of colors up here so we can assign a background color to each page so we can actually see it. So we're gonna say system red, system green or gray. Let's try green this time, orange and purple. So we have five, so that should be good to go. So let's say page dot background color is colors and the color at the X position. Uh, so go ahead and hit Command R. And we should be able to scroll through this. And if you notice, it'll snap between pages. So looking good. Uh, now what we wanna do is hook up the page control, which is kind of the reason you all are here. So hooking up the page control is two-parted. The first part is we, when you tap the control, we want to actually move the scroll view and we're gonna do that via a value changed action. So we're gonna say page control 
add target cell. And we're gonna create the selector in a second, but you want for value changed. And basically we're gonna create a function here. And we're gonna say page control did change where the sender is a UI page control. And then here we can say the selector is that function we just created. Page control did change like so. And in here, this will get called every single time the page controls uh, current page value changes. So we can pull that out by saying the current is the sender dot current page. And I believe this is an integer. Yep, it's an integer. And then we can simply scroll the scroll view now. We can say set content offset. We wanna animate it to that page. And this is a CG point, which is an X and a Y. So we're gonna convert the current page to a CG float. And that's this current thing right here. We're gonna multiply that by the width of each page and the Y is going to be zero. So go ahead and hit Command R. And now when we tap on this page control down here, you'll notice as the indicator position changes, the scroll view also moves itself and you can go in both directions and it uh, scrolls and animates. But the other thing we need to do to wrap it up is when we move the scroll view, this guy isn't moving. So for that, we need to implement the scroll view delegate so what we want to do is say scroll view dot delegate is self and we're going to extend our view controller and we're going to conform to ui scroll view delegate and the function we care about is scroll view did scroll so every time the scroll view scrolls we want to calculate which page the user is now on so we can say let page uh, or we can actually just assign it. We can say page control, current page is going to be scroll view dot content offset dot X over scroll view dot frame dot size dot width. And we want to uh, floor this, AKA round it down. And we also want these to be floating points. So if you take a look at the declaration here, uh, dot X is I believe a CG float. So we're gonna convert this to a float. And then we're also going to convert that to a float. And if we command B, we should be good to go. Let's see, what is this complaining about? Cannot assign value of float. Uh, to type int, that's because it wants this whole thing to be an int. So we're gonna convert the entire thing to an int after it rounds it down, which is this floor function. The reason we round it down is while the user is scrolling in between, uh, we don't want to have a uh, floating point, a decibel point. So that is what we need to do. So hit command R and let's see if this guy changes as we scroll. So we're on the first one, second one, third one, so you can see as you scroll in both directions now, uh, it appropriately moves. We can still tap on it and it still changes. Uh, and there you have it. That's how you can set up a page control and hook it up to your content. So this is a pretty common control across iOS. Uh, you can see it at the bottom of your home screen between pages. You can see it on Instagram when there is a multi post or multi photo post. Uh, it's very common when your app launches and folks have a welcome flow where you can swipe through. And it's just kind of a good user design to see how many uh, pages are left for the view user to view, right? It's, it's just to show how much content is still off the screen. So that said, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you haven't destroyed that like button, as always, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. I greatly appreciate it. It helps me make more videos for all of you. If you have any questions, as always, throw those down below in the comments. I try to reply within a reasonable amount of time. Subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I will catch you guys in the next video.